love the chase and the hunt And I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 Don't need a bank, no I'm funded Play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something Don't take for granted, stay humble Now wake up! It's time to look at the enemy Look in the mirror if he is no friend to me It's not working out, maybe it's the chemistry It's time to break up so I can make a better me Better believe in your mind cause it's everything You can mold shape, find almost anything All it takes is some time and some clarity To find your identity, it's mind over everything Okay, so I'm going to make the um, room, this entire room, into a uh, theatre space, as in... Uh, well, like, the whole thing is a theatre space. Uh, yes, but what I mean is, instead of just a stage and the audience, I want the audience to come in to... Uh, uh, what are the words I'm looking for? The um, oh yeah, it was strip pole. Maybe I could, maybe I could use this. Well, that's what I mean. Is um, <laughs> I mean I don't, I don't know, but maybe, maybe I'll use this, the strip, the strip pole. Um, I don't think that's a strip pole. Um, I could be a fireman, a sexy fireman. Okay, so shush. Um, I yeah, I want them to be immersed. That was the word I was looking for. Did I say it already? I don't know. Um, God, when I get excited, hey, oh, oh, oh wow, woo, wow, I get to that level. Um, but I, I would like to, as a 35-year-old man, speak, uh, speak down here. I think that'd be really, that'd be more fun for, for me. Um, uh, I don't know if it'd be more fun, but I think it'd be sexier, wouldn't it? Although I used to speak at this level, and I uh, I did I did all right for myself with the ladies, so um, <laughs> so I don't think it matters. Okay, good. So we've learned some stuff about me. Okay, so breathing. Breathing is important. Breathing is very important whenever you want to be alive, um, but also to not get carried away in uh, nonsense because right now, now, now I'm just talking. Now this is a stream of consciousness, which is fun, but to get to work. Yeah, I am. This is the work. You know. You know. You, you already know you're filming it, so you're being a performer. <laughs> I know. So, um, what can what can we do with this space? Well, I have the uh sort of paintings that i've made i don't think they're paintings drawings the charcoal drawings that i've made and i was tempted to leave them on the floor uh because essentially what, what i want to develop is a, 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 in a way a main protagonist right because the script is multiple characters which makes sense for the story but um, to perform it is actually quite challenging and it does need a sort of through line for one being um, a unified character with all of those people included so uh, that is quite chaotic as in the 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 experience that I had was uh, <laughs> I don't even know if it was chaos or order as in like I saw so many things uh, align in uh, not only my internal but external world as if I was almost in the middle of the, the, the two uh, that essentially is order. Things were sort of reassembling themselves, but um, 
it was not what I was used to. So therefore, it very much uh, felt like chaos. And thus, uh, I want the audience, when they walk in, from the minute they walk in, I want them to... be immersed in, well, my brain, I suppose. What do I want to achieve with the story? Because I told myself that I wanted to be a comedy horror and uh, I have on occasion said that um, I want the audience to feel scared. But I don't want them to leave <laughs> terrified of the world. I want them to like experience something that, that is scary to the point where, you know, maybe, maybe some, one, none, but maybe the possibility of audience members leaving because of how intense it could get that would be very exciting and uh, I don't think that is my responsibility how they interpret what goes on but there has to be a separation from the, this body this version of me in this room and the external version of me. As in outside of that door, that door, that door, those two doors. Yeah, there's five doors here. <laughs> um, because generally an audience doesn't feel like the show has started until they've sat down and are watching the experience on stage. And my reality is that I am so fucking immersed in this event that happened to me, which is both paradoxically traumatic and yet awakening. Something that I want to share with people to actually alleviate their stress, their worries, their fears. Because I believe that I am with consciousness, but, but I also live in consciousness, and thus there's nothing to fear, and there's something kind of beautiful about that. Now, uh, the skeptic and atheist in me would say, what about all these fucking horrible things that are happening in the world? And I would say, yeah, but in the eternal, there has to be drama, there has to be games, and even death, which I believe is a season, just as winter is a season, um, is part of the play in the infinite. Or, you know, or this is a defense mechanism that I have put in my own mind because it's actually quite nice in a way to have an imaginary friend who, you know, potentially is uh, manipulating the environment. And, and actually, as I'm saying this, I'm going, no, I have experienced so many fucking mad shit that I can appreciate 
um, as understandable mathematically. So that's that, I think that's what the challenge is: is you know, is there a god, or does the universe harmonizes itself uh, like a self? Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? What's the word I'm looking for, everyone? Hey. Uh, come on! <laughs> regulating! A self regulating organism. But just to witness that was. <laughs> it blew my mind! I mean, it literally fucked with my head, uh, and and the mechanisms involved are not necessarily beyond my comprehension. Although I appreciate that it's always going to be surprising it's always going to be like unfathomable because as soon as i peek over a wall open a new door well there's more stuff i'm like fucking hell every time i discover something new i feel like an idiot again i'm always at the back of the line going fuck it what's so you all new yeah we all yeah we've all been playing this for millennia oh i've just discovered it the script, as I said, is multiple people that I feel are either living in me or being channeled through me at certain points in space and time. And I can't tell if I'm an actor perpetuating this hysteria within me. Uh, or whether this is a sort of supernatural phenomenon. And by supernatural, I don't mean like, hooray! Or maybe hooray! I mean, you know, this could be a dream! Connect! Connect! Yeah! Yeah! Who? Yeah! Right! So. Okay. Um, so. so in conclusion, this is going to be an atmosphere, baby. I'm going to have a good time with this. Okay. I've always wondered what this transformative experience that I've had, uh, what it actually means. You know, sometimes I, I'm trying to put a word on it, like, like sin eater. Um, you know, I, I, as I travel through spaces and times, do I pick up passengers, uh, ghosts, that all of a sudden can cling on to me. And then I get to help them along the way. Let them heal, let them relive, reincarnate. My hope is that they don't fuck too much with my life. But how would I know? If this body is a ship, um, there's no if about it. I mean, if you think about how many organs you have going on inside you that you're not like actually in control of, uh, that the body is m mostly uh, on automation because it is a complex system, then, uh, There is an awareness that you're not really fully in charge. But let's say this body, uh, I have to identify with it. I want to identify with it because, uh, well, after amnesia and almost leaving the body or disappearing or dying or whatever it was, um, ding, 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 ding. 
thinking. I um would appreciate uh, some control or well, all, all control, right, of my body. Or, um, what's the word I'm looking for? If the, yeah, if this is a ship, there are there is a captain and there is a team uh, involved. Which is what this has felt like. But it's just that, on occasion, I don't feel like I'm the captain of my own ship. Wait, you know, well, stuff. Because I gave myself a deadline. I'm actually dealing with the challenge of, you know, being this alien marionette. And dealing with grief, man. I've said it before on stage, and thankfully I'm, you know, I'm able to make it funny. But there is, there is a truth to how amnesia is is the grief of not just your own death, but the death of everyone you ever knew. I walk around sometimes feeling like Eric, who is the person I was before that. And, and, and then I go, oh, okay, yeah, no, that makes sense. Eric is the, the identity, the mask that this is wearing. And, um, and, and, and with that, there are questions of, well, then, therefore, what's underneath this? Who's underneath this? And obviously that, that leads to questions of uh, souls and, you know, those more complex uh, beings. And that is, I think, scary. You know, the, the... Let's say if, a, if all of a sudden a soul, a being, just landed in me, you know, is it in terms of storytelling, a good guy or a bad guy. And I understand that there is no such thing because uh, with context, you can always find uh, some causality as to why a person becomes the person that they are today. I suppose at the very, very, very crux, if you take out all the layers, that I suppose is what the word uh, God belongs. That's where it belongs. It's like, well, you know, therefore everything's God. I am the entire thing inside me is God, but so is the space outside of me, you know, this pole, this these walls outside of these walls that camera the you you wherever you're looking and then wherever you are that entire space and you and beyond is you know that god yahweh uh allah you know all these things that like people try and comprehend i wonder if that's why uh Muslim people say you can't draw Muhammad. It's like, it's not that you can't, it's like you can't, man. Like, how do you draw, like, just everything? How do you just, how do you draw this? You just, you know.
And I live in a sort of persistent unknowing. All of a sudden, I am humbled and stupid in the vast unknown. I ask questions like, do the tattoos I have on my arm actually mean anything beyond what I think they mean? Uh, is this t-shirt of Jean-Michel Basquiat, is it just a fun t-shirt that I uh, am wearing or does it represent something? Is, is all of a sudden that artist involved in the universe that I live in, you know? And then, and then you start seeing patterns that maybe are there or maybe they're not. Basquiat worked very closely with Warhol. Warhol's from Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is the city where my ex-wife is from, you know, and then and she had such an integral part to play in my story. And sometimes I hope, fuck man, was I was I a part to play in hers or was I just a just a fading memory? It's fine if that's the case, you know. Who fucking knows? But there's this push and pull between who I was and, and who I am now. It feels like Eric is dead. But I've also very briefly lived as a being where Eric wasn't there. And what is Eric but a collection of the memories? A collection of the memories that, you know, I traversed through. And so I have to hold on to these memories, and then and then I, and then I hear uh, a separate version of me go, "No, let go, let go," and I go, let, what, "Let go of everything." But as I do it, I then just discover that there's more. There's, oh, there's always more. Now, and now and now I feel like, what am I being asked to just let go of fucking everything? Because sometimes I, I look at certain colours together and I go that makes me think of her Whether she meant to or not, she has left a scar in my soul. I certainly do not blame her. I can't blame anyone. That's the fucking tragedy. And then all of a sudden, you know, there's this part of me that go, you know, <laughs> which way around was it? Did God create man or did man create God? Because at I know, I feel it. Sometimes, sometimes I just fucking feel it. This rage. <sighs> that I can't direct to, to, towards anyone. Nobody deserves it. But I also feel like I don't deserve it. I don't deserve to just <laughs> keep it in sometimes. Like, 
I've been burning myself. I've been harming myself because a part of me just needs to, you know, <laughs> whatever that. Well, is that is that performance or is that another being? Yeah, because it's entertaining, and I find it entertaining, and I'm aware as well that it's being filmed. But <laughs> I've been like that without the fucking cameras being on. Although. I have also come to realise that in hyper technology, I mean technology that goes beyond the Kardashev scale, like unimaginable Kardashev scale, everything can be filmed. So while I'm being filmed here, uh, anywhere, just a camera could just be there, right there, because I might be existing in just a, such futuristic technology that while I think it's 2022, it could be fucking, it could be, it could be future or it could be past because it has come to my attention that technology and magic is starting to blend, man. But once you, once you start seeing shit happening around you and to you, you're like, fucking hell, this is amazing. Uh, obviously, but also terrifying because you you feel like a tiny little ant. Tiny little ant. Oh, oh, oh look at all of this. Thank you. 